Dude, if you just, if you're operating at 40% and you go to 60 or 80%, 80% is 100% improvement, right? I mean, you don't have to go to 100%. You don't have to be operating at certain levels. And then I think, I think social media creates the illusion. It's, it's almost fictitious that it creates the illusion that people are operating this way. And sure, some people may be, but I don't think that's always the answer for every single person. The answer is to be comfortable with what it is that you care about and then double down on that. And then rather than letting your day be ruined by comparison, because you're comparing yourself to all these other people, just start comparing yourself to who you were yesterday. What it is, Brad Lee back again with another episode of Dropping Bombs today in the studio. Folks, as always, I got a real treat for you. Kalen Compass in the house. Thanks for having me. What's up, buddy? Just living the dream. Folks, if you guys don't know who this is, author and coach, author of Fuck Mediocrity, Be Powerful, Be Legendary. Absolutely. Although it doesn't say the word, <laughs> it just kind of has the socially acceptable yes. fuck symbol on there. Why do you feel like people are stuck? This says... This says, reading this book may inspire you to get unstuck, unlock greatness, and become the man you could be. Is this for men, this book? Yes, for men. What, 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 what makes you want to help men? Well, um, I think we are always best positioned to serve the person who we once were. So, you know, I needed help one day. And so, so the what, what's your story, though? Like, how'd you, what, <laughs> what, why? There's always a story that gets you here. What's your story? Yeah, mine's a little maybe less linear than most. So I uh, I did all the right things, and then I just decided I wanted to do something different in life. So I graduated college. Um, I went back for another degree and was like, dude, I'm just punting. I have no idea what I want to do. So I tried to get into indie acting. Um, that didn't indie. work. Yeah, sort like of indie, indie films. Yeah, indie films. Yeah, so I went down to Austin for that, uh, Austin, Texas, and that didn't work out. Um, didn't really like it. So I ended up finding myself as a male dancer, actually. Um, so I did that up in Dallas for about six years. Um, and that left me feeling just totally run down, totally worthless. And um, after that, you know, I, I tried to start a business with my dad. That went horrible. Um, I was like borderline bankruptcy. And so I just committed to really solving the biggest problem, which was myself. Like I'm the common denominator in my life. And so that's really what I've been doing for the last six years. And so then I took all of that information and on any given year, I typically read 50 to hundred books, sometimes 150 books a year. And I wanted something that I could help other people with that was more of a comprehensive volume. Cause I mean, you know, this, like I do, I mean, most people, if they read one to five books a year, it's, that might be a lot. So I wanted something that I could hand somebody and be like, dude, if you read this book, it's going to change your life. Like it's got the principles that help me go from just totally worthless, you know, getting lost in a bottle every single night to really turning my whole life around and having a mindset that is what I would say is empowering and you know, actually gets results. You were so, a drinker. I developed a little bit of a habit at the club. Yep. So it's kind of like a, like an NFL player. You know, if you're, you see those guys and they eat a certain way when they're in F, the NFL and then they stop, but they keep eating that way. Yeah. That's how it was with the drinking. So where are you from? I hear an accent of some kind. Arkansas originally. Doesn't sound like an Arkansas accent. <laughs> Where'd you think? I don't know. Like, you know, Boston or some shit. Oh no, definitely not. See? Oh no. <laughs> it's almost like Minnesota, maybe. You know, my mom's from Ohio, so that could be it. Ah. So tell me about, like, if someone's stuck or someone's feeling like you were, where do they begin? Yeah, I think the, the first thing is you have to actually get truthful with yourself that you're stuck. Uh, for me, that was one of the biggest things is actually admitting that I'm the reason for everything in my life. And so getting truthful, you know, Richard Feynman has a quote that, the first principle is you must not fool yourself and you are the easiest person to fool. So I think you've got to get on truth. How do you do that? Sometimes you got to look in the mirror and have a hard conversation with yourself. So well, I know, but it sounds, it sounds good, 
but yep. I'm, I'm trying to like think through because sometimes I've thought I'm stuck. Yep. So I'm thinking, and a lot of times on these podcasts, I'm asking questions for me, not, not yep. the listeners. Yep. So I'm thinking, okay, so number one, you identified that you're stuck. How did you know that? Because a lot of people feel that way, but they're not necessarily looking in a mirror and taking responsibility. They just think they're stuck. Everybody wants to be rich. Yeah. Everybody thinks they should be doing better than they are, but they don't ever change. What, what, do, what should they do? Yeah. I mean, you've got to have a degree of heart, a degree of hunger. Um, you know, in one of your last podcasts, PBD talked about Patrick, Bet David talked about finding enemies. You, I think it's important for people to admit that they want to change how they feel. And so if you're feeling stuck, if you're feeling those things, then I would always encourage somebody to amplify those feelings. And the easiest way to do that is to change your environment, change your peer group, go someplace that you're uncomfortable. If you go get uncomfortable enough, if you change that enough, it's difficult. It's difficult to sit with the uncertainty of that. But if you do sit with that uncertainty, then I think a lot of life is getting enough leverage on yourself to then take the necessary steps in order to start that transformation. And a lot of that, in my opinion, is just reframing or rebuilding skill sets to go to that next level. But, or that was just my journey. You, you, you're fit, obviously. So a little bit, but that doesn't come in a, in a year. No, that's a, like a long ass time. That, that's, that's uh, a few years of training. Yeah. How long's that been going on? I've been working out since I was 14, 15 years. But you ago. had that going then. Yeah. So like, what about the dudes that are, cause I see a lot of dudes in the gym and they always mess with me. Yep. They come up and they're talking about, Hey, didn't see you here for, for a couple <laughs> days. <laughs> and I'm like, I haven't seen you at the bank either. <laughs> so what, so like where there's a lot of dudes that are, you know, they got the body down. Cause to me, dude, if you can get like that, then you can kick ass in business. You can kick ass in life is because that's discipline. So I partially agree. I partially don't. You've got a lot of fit dudes that can get themselves to do fitness, but they can't bring themselves to have a hard conversation. Why? With employees, with whatever. I mean, they're pussies. <laughs> um, but don't you don't you agree that if they took the same discipline it requires to get in killer shape and applied that somewhere else? Because, I mean, you had to have a, somebody at some point in time has to say, I, I, I want to get in shape. Yeah, I mean, discipline's universal in a certain sense. I talk about it in my book that I think environmental design can also be more important than discipline. Like you can have discipline in one narrow area, but not have it in other areas of your life. So learning how to get discipline to transcend all the areas of your life, that's sort of a meta fundamental. If you can get that to cross, that's like a superpower, but not everybody can. So you've got guys at the gym that sure, they've got the discipline. They'll go do, you know, crush this one thing, but then the rest of their life, they can't translate that. So I think the real question is how do you translate meta fundamentals across a series of of endeavors throughout life so that you really win the big game of life, which is to keep playing the big game of life. But isn't it pretty much the same? I mean, discipline is discipline. Um, I think, I think environmental design can be really important. So if you get around when you're at the gym, you're around a certain group of people, you have a certain group of friends, they hold you accountable to go into the gym, but maybe you're also hanging around and let's just say you're all gym owners. Um, and so you're also hanging around all these other gym owners, but these guys are scared to have the critical conversations with their employees about what needs to be done to clean their gyms up. So maybe their gyms aren't um, as nice, but they've got the discipline to go in there and train every day. So again, I think your peer group is massively important with what you do. Facts. Um, so yeah, I mean, if, Really getting breakthroughs, uh, I think it's different for every person, but I also think it's similar where it's just getting on truth of that leverage. So, so if you found a dude that's like, you know, married, couple of kids making eighty, ninety thousand dollars $90,000 a year, not really happy, thinks they're, they're, you know, worth more than that, but they can't seem to get anywhere. What would, and you, you were coaching them. What's the first conversation you're having with them? Do they work for themselves or do they work for a company? A company. A company. 
I would say one of the first conversations is get yourself fit. <laughs> it's an easy jumping off point to start building self-worth and start building discipline as we've talked about, and also to build commitments with yourself. And oftentimes when people first see that visible change and they recognize that in 90 to 120 days, they can create such a massive transformation in their life, then they mentally can translate that to say, I can actually transfer this skill to other areas of my life. So then obviously, if they're working for somebody else, if they want to continue working for that person, show up at a higher level, show up for a higher level and do that repeatedly to the point that they can't ignore how highly you're showing up and then get the balls to have a conversation and say, I need a raise. I need more. I'm bringing more value to the company. And then if that company won't allow you to bring more value to it, start finding companies that will, because there are people that want people that show up at a high level. For sure. Problem is, is again, these guys that are stuck in my mind, when I think of people that are stuck, they don't have a clue what to do. They think they're doing this. Everything you're saying, they think they're doing it already. Yep. And when I hear you say, have a conversation, uh, uh, what, what do you mean? Well, I know what you mean, but I'm, I'm, I'm acting like I'm a listener. Like, what do you mean? Have a conversation. I've had a million conversations <laughs> with myself and it gets me nowhere. Yeah. Yeah. That's, um, so I'll tell you a story. <clears throat> it was back in 2019 and I just, I was crying one day, just totally disappointed in myself. And I literally went to the mirror and when I say have a conversation, I'm, I'm not speaking metaphorically. I'm literally saying, go to the mirror. I mean, I've got tears coming out of my eyes and I'm looking at myself and I'm like, how do I feel so worthless? How have I ended up here? I'm fucking 30 years old. I'm supposed to have things figured out. I don't lack talent. I don't lack discipline. So why is my life so in shambles? Why would, why do you think it was so in shambles? What would describe shambles? <laughs> to me, it reflected a life that was in shambles to what I expected for myself. And so, I mean, that's a, that's an easy one that expectations are the mother of disappointment. Did you come from a family that, that were achievers? Sort of. So on my mom's side, I grew up in a really conservative family, but then on my dad's side, my grandfather was a millionaire by like 30. And I was kind of always taught that they were high achievers and you were supposed to be something and you somehow knew how the world worked. And then I came to the realization that I didn't know how the world worked. I didn't have a methodology to actually get results. I didn't have a methodology to be the man that I was proud of. And so I just did a lot of things that um, I feel like I slowly eroded my sense of self with little incremental steps over the years. And I just reached this point where I thought I didn't feel worthy to breathe air. I didn't feel worthy to take up space. I thought... Like, how am I here? And that's, that's a dark place to be. It, it's not something that I reached trivially. I, I like looking back on it, it seems difficult that I could end up there now looking at it. But at the time I had given everything a negative meaning. I was focusing on what I couldn't control versus what I could control. I was focusing on what was wrong versus what was right. I was focusing on um, what was unavailable versus available. And so I essentially created my world that created this sense of unworthiness within myself. And so that's, that's how I ended up there. Uh, my world wasn't really that bad, objectively so, looking at it now. Yeah, looking back, w would you agree that if you want your life to change, you have to kind of change your perspective? You know, I, I talk about it in my book that if you want your life to change, you have to change. And a lot of people want changes without actually changing. Turns out that doesn't work. Yeah. But what you were just saying again, to me, it's like a lot of the times, cause I'm in this business, this self development business. Yep. And a lot of times when people are saying, you know, if you want change, you got to change, of course. But again, some people hear that and they're like, well, well, obviously, but what do I change? Number one, get in shape. Yep. Start building habits. Cause if you ask me, it's mindset skill set habits. If your mindset's off, you know, it's very difficult to do anything right. Right. Yep. Or at least feel capable, which that's your self-worth. That's your self-esteem. Without that, you're kind of screwed. 
then you could be all positive and shit, but you're not very talented. You're not very good at anything. Well, it, it, listen, you can run passionately in the wrong direction. It doesn't get you anywhere. So now you have to go focus on what are you good at and get good at something. And then there's habits, you know, obviously to, to be in shape, you have to have the right habits. I struggle with getting in shape habits. I can get in decent shape. Like I'm decent, especially when people say, well, dude, you're 55. You look good for 55. I don't want to look good for 55. I want to look good, period. But dude, I'm telling you, and I'm pretty successful. So even successful people fall short. I find myself always procrastinating and freaking making excuses you know, hey, you know, I got to get to the office at nine, so I'll do, I'll work out at night. And then at night, well, the kids want to play, so I'll work out at 930. Then it's 930 and it's like, damn, I didn't get a chance to do this, that, and the other thing. So, you know, I'll just work out in the morning. As long as I work out in the morning, I'm good. Wake up in the morning, can't work out for whatever reason. Next thing you know, dude, a week went by, you didn't work out. That happens. That shit happens. How do you solve it? What's the trick that I can use to where, dude, I don't skip workouts. I don't fuck around. Well, are you um, scheduling your priorities or prioritizing your schedule? I am. What? Say that again. <laughs> are you scheduling your priorities or are you prioritizing your schedule? I'm scheduling priorities. But I'm also procrastinating. Like, for example, every morning, at least five days a week, preferably six, I want to get up, go to the gym for 90 minutes. <clears throat> I don't have an alarm clock, <clears throat> and I don't use one, so I'm not going to set one. I think if, you're, if, you're, if you remain asleep, it's because your body's saying, you know, you need some recovery. So anyway, I don't use an alarm clock. So normally I'll get up 5, 30, 6 a.m. Well, 90 minutes later, it's 7.30. That's plenty of time to come home, get ready, get here about 8.30 or 9, right? But if I wake up at, you know, 7.30, well, I don't have the hour and a half, so I'm, I'll work out at night. And a lot of times when I, I, I got to get pissed about it. So when I get home, I, I'm literally pissed. Why? Because I got to go to the fucking gym. And I get pissed and I go because, you know, but I wish I could just find a way to just go happily or whatever you were saying. Maybe I should be s scheduling my priorities. Well, because what is a priority? <laughs> Do I really need to be in killer shape? Dude, I don't <laughs> think my life's going to improve that much. I, I, I could agree with that one. I, I know there's a lot of people out there that will say, you're not a real man if you're not working out or if you're not in shape. And one thing that I talk about a lot in my book is actually learning the process of saying no and understanding and sitting with that comfortability. I think a lot of men spend a fair portion of their life living in FOMO and just shooting all over themselves. I should do this. I should do that. And that's part of scheduling priorities. And that's learning to say no to a lot of the things that just don't fucking matter. I mean, that's, that's call of duty. Yeah. I mean, that's, but it, what if it, what if it calms you down? <laughs> what if you enjoy it? <laughs> Well, I enjoy a lot of things. Do you enjoy working out? I actually don't enjoy working out very much. So you're doing it because you know it's a it's a fundamental basic that you have to do. It's a foundation for and me. And you figured out a way to do it. Because you can always tell there's people that have figured it out and there's people that haven't. And then, as you said, pointed out, and then some can't cross over to the next thing and the next thing and the next thing, but some can. You know, you see some, I, I know a few people that are shredded. They're, I mean, it doesn't matter what they're doing. They're getting that in and they don't like it either, but they get it in and then they go to the work and they dominate and then they go, you know, all, all their areas of their life they're dominating in. And I think, you know, I dominate it, you know, from looking somewhere else, everyone would say, yeah, he's crushing it. However, fitness, I'm all right. Like I said, but I'm not, I, I need to be way better, but I'm stuck objectively like and I'm you said, rationalizing objectively like you said is your life going to make a marginal improvement that you care about to the point to make that sacrifice because no let's, obviously let's let's be <laughs> no. clear let's be clear I know I am but the answer is no commitments are defined by that which you're willing to sacrifice for them. right and that's okay like I'm just sitting here telling you that's okay 
And you can keep saying, I should do this. I should do this. I should do this. And that's that inner conflict that just playing over and over. And there's so many guys out there that are playing this inner conflict. And it's like, man, I'm a piece of shit because I didn't go to the gym today. And I should have gone to the gym, but I wanted to do all this other stuff. And they just haven't decided to say, what are my priorities that actually matter? And you have to understand, like, like, I think no is the most powerful word in the English language. And I think now is the most expensive because most people sacrifice what they want now for what they want most. And if having a certain physique is important to you in six months from now, great, go do that. If it's not, that's okay too. I'm not one of those people. Do you think a physique would make a massive difference in in a lot of lives? Because I do think that's the truth. But just it depends on what you look like. Again, you get a big slob looking dude that's just fat, like, like, dude, come on. You know, that guy, I think a, a body will change their their self worth so in that case yes but again if i flipped off my shirt i personally don't believe and i don't think anyone would disagree that i'm a big blob of shit (laughs) i'm in decent shape but i also i think that's my problem i don't believe that getting in like your shape would do much for me i don't think i'm going to get anything more other than i'll look better and dude, like, I want to be fair to other guys. I don't want to just fucking <laughs> yeah, you, you ruin them. Yeah, you can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> That's not even fair, dude. I walk in the room buff too. Shit. I'm going to start causing depression. Exactly. Yeah, but in, re- in reality, my weakness, if I'm looking at this book thinking, man, I, I should read that. What would What would be what I'm trying to solve? I'm trying to solve why is it I keep rationalizing and procrastinating getting in this kind of shape is it you you were you were heading somewhere was it is it because i really don't care at the end of the day it must be because i don't care and when you were asking those questions like i was answering them you know what i really don't care so if i don't care how can i care or should i care you know i try very um carefully in my book not to necessarily put my values on other people. I think it's important for what my book tries to help people do is actually get clear about their values, what is important to you, and then actually gain a degree of acceptance on what's important. So the first chapter is is all about giving yourself permission and admitting that that's okay. Now, if you say, hey, this is important, great. But if not, I, I tell people, The only wrong decision is to stay in indecision. And when you stay in indecision, you're just there all day long and it's just chipping away at you. It's like a thousand little leaks rather than just making a decision and saying, you know what? I'm not going to shoot all over myself for the next 90 days for the first quarter. And this is the commitment that I have. And then if you say, you know what? I am serious about this. I do want to do this. Then make a decision and do what you say you're going to do. But if you live your whole life in this state of halfway in, halfway out, that's no way to live. So, I mean, all of us, life is going to end. It's coming to an end. So we just have to decide what's the experience that we want to have. And I have a, I have a great friend and he's a programmer, doesn't work out at all. And is he any less of a man because of that? Is he any less of a man? Is the world a worse place? I mean, this guy's brilliant. I mean, he was he was like working at Tesla before. I mean, wicked smart. I don't think it's everybody wicked. That's Boston. <laughs> that was his description of of it. But you know, but I think people just have to get clear on their things. Does he? Have you talked to him about how come you're not in shape? I have offered that if he would like any sort of guidance, then I'm here to help. But I, again, don't think it's helpful to push my values on other people. I mean, I'll, I'll call somebody well, sometimes out. Sometimes di- I would disagree with you. Cause again, you got a big fat friend. You need to, you need to tell your big fat friend, he, dude, it's not, time to get in shape. Again, yeah, he's, you don't he's have to fat. be ripped. Oh, he's yeah. not. Yeah. He's not fat. But. Yeah. Cause to me, dude, if I got a friend and, and I, and I obviously, you know, care about the dude, I'm going to encourage him to get in shape. When my in shape and you're in shape is two different things. That to me is like, you know, in shape. I'm talking about my in shape. 
You know what I mean? Like just healthy. Cause again, dude, I can, I can, I can, you know, run around, play with my kids. I can, you know, walk all over Disneyland. I can, I'm in shape. So, so you're rich. You got some money. I wouldn't say rich, but yeah, you got some money. I heard this quote from James D. Nicolantonio that there are 22 million millionaires in the U S really. And there are 3 million people that have visible abs. So you tell me what's a bigger status symbol being a millionaire or having those abs or having both. Well, both is the answer. Both is the answer. But again, you, you just said status symbol. Status. How much does it matter? I think that's my problem. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> I kind of do, but I kind of don't. See, I'm stuck. This is the, <laughs> the people listening are like, dude, I'm, I'm, I understand what Brad's saying. It's because, again, dude, like my buddies are ripped. They got money. I know people with abs and money yep. and I'm like, yeah, dude, that's, fr- I, I want that. But then yep. when I start doing it, I find myself like, do I really want it? Because sometimes like, dude, it, what, what's it going to do? I'm married. Cause to me, I always equate being ripped with just more chicks. Yeah. Yeah. That's what happens. Isn't it? Yeah. You get more chicks. <laughs> that's it. What else happens? I mean, like, like again, healthy. I'm talking about, I, I get more attention from guys from being attracted <clears throat> than girls, <laughs> but health, it's, but it's healthy hilarious. is another thing. Cause I've seen rip motherfuckers that are also very unhealthy. I was going to say, I, I don't think being overly jacked is always healthy for a lot of guys. And so I, I don't think the, that's always the answer. And plus that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You done any of those? Don't yeah. be bullshitting. No, no, I'm on TRT. Well, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about TRT is not steroids. Yeah, I I did it back in my 20s, in my early 20s. So did I. Yeah, I tried. And by the way, I was in shape then too. Yeah, it was. (laughs) But you know, when you're when you're you know doing some shit, you're dumb if you do the shit and then don't work out. So doing the shit is actually what motivated me to keep going and like, dude, I got to go to the gym because I did it anyway. But I got in shape and then I kind of just let it go. Then I'd get in shape and then just kind of let it go. Then I'd get in shape then I'd kind of let it go. It's been my whole life. I don't understand. Even on social media, dude, you see me starting to look lean. Then you start yeah. to see me fat again. They're thinking, well, <laughs> they use an old footage. Nah, I just went like this. Yeah. So right now I'm, I've, I've discovered intermittent fasting. What do you think about that? I mean, it's just another tool in an arsenal to get results. I mean, you can, you can get lean from intermittent fasting. You can get lean from eating low carb from high carb. There's all sorts of ways to get. Fit. I've never found the high carb one. Show me that one. <laughs> you can get lean. Now you've got to be in a calorie deficit. So, so you can only eat carb, like two carbs. Well, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it depends on the carbs that you eat. Uh, Tim Ferriss has a great book on it called the four hour body. Uh, and he talks about slow carbs. And so that's based off of a lot of legumes, low glycemic index foods. Um, and so you can have those, obviously it's still high protein, but it's lower fat. You know, so when I, when I say that, I mean, I, I don't think anybody feels very good when their fat drops below about 20% of their total calorie intake. Um, you know, but well, you so. will freedom 2.0. Is that a coaching group? Yeah. So that's the company that I formed, um, just to solve that. I came to that point when I was about 30 years old and I was like, all right, I've been pursuing freedom. That's one of my highest values. And I just looked around and I was like, I don't feel free at all. And so I, that was another thing that I did. I pulled out a piece of paper and I was like, all right, well, here's freedom 1.0. That didn't work out very well. What is, what does 2.0 look like? And what so, does it look like? You know, for me, it's, it's more about changing my internal world and then my external world starts to reflect those things. And so it's more about who I'm being and who I'm being with myself. And then once I, once I, you talk about it in your book, learning to forgive yourself and learning to um, be able to step back and, and have those conversations and be honest and sort of dig through that ego. And rather than having to be this guy that's always right, um, I built my ego. Tom Billy, you talks about it more about being a learner and instead built my ego around that. And so, you know, now if I do something bad or badly, I don't say I am bad. I say that was just something bad. And so that's a big difference between shame and guilt. And I had what was to me, a lot of shame. I felt like I am bad, even though as a person, like my life didn't say that I'm a bad person. I'm just not in the best scenario. So I think for a lot of people out there listening, it's important to understand and say like, just because you've done something bad or badly 
or your life may not be where you want it to. It doesn't mean that you're bad. It just means you're where you're at right now. And once you start learning to have gratitude for that and reframing, as we said, perspective, paradigm, call it whatever you want, mindset. Once you start paying attention to different things, you start getting different results in your life. And that's that process of sort of peeling back the onion layer on beliefs, you know, because beliefs are just oftentimes you act out what you believe. And then, of course, you get those actions and then those actions lead to the results and the results that you get reinforce the underlying beliefs that cause the actions in the first place. And, and so, like, yeah. and then people go on circle on this loop, you know, and, and then That's they can't get out. That is exactly what happens. Do you know how you change your results? Hey, you want to spend an hour a week with me helping you become a business badass? Well, check out my group in the link below. I believe in your book, you say new information. No, that's how you change your beliefs. Your beliefs. Yeah. Because what you just said is exactly right. Yeah. I tell people this all the time and they're like, to get something different, your results, you have to do something different. Problem is, is the, the reason people do what they do is because of their beliefs. Yep. Like you said, oftentimes, everything you do is based on your beliefs. So whatever reason you believe it is irrelevant and it doesn't even make, mean it has to be true. If, if it's a belief of yours, subconscious or consciously, you're going to act upon those. That's why you do what you do, period. You can ask freaking Jordan Peterson or any other damn psychologist. So in order to change what you're doing, you have to change what you believe. And the way, and the way you change what you believe is get new information, which is why people should go get your book. Even if I read your book and I'm, I don't agree with everything. So what? There's some information in here that I don't have and I want it. And everybody on earth should say the same thing. Any kind of self-help book I'm an advocate of. I went to like about 45, didn't read anything ever. People would say, do you read? And I'm like, read what? Like, what do you mean? Read, read books? No, they're stupid. And literally now everyone says, what would you change if you could go back? Dude, I'd be reading every day. I'd be reading 150 books. Do you think that helped you reading all those books? Massively. <clears throat> But I, I had to get to a point where I could accept the knowledge. So for years, I was reading all those books, but I was really only taking things in that confirmed my view of the world, of reality. Yeah. And anything that was in disagreement with that, I, I pushed to the side. You and wouldn't, so, and you so wouldn't. of course, it didn't. I didn't ingest it. And so it was only when I stepped back, and Ray Dalio talks about this in his book, Principles. And it talks about, he, he talks about rather than, having to arrive at the right answer, starting to ask the question, how do I know that I'm right? And then developing that degree of skepticism with myself, rather than thinking I'm so smart, Charlie Munger has that saying, you know, he's like, everybody else is out here trying to be smart and I'm just trying to not be stupid, but it's harder than it looks, right? It's, it's actually more difficult. And, and so that's a critical point. Especially when you're in a leadership position, you know, there's people I'm sure in freedom 2.0 that are, because that's created to help men, get unstuck, achieve their true potential and become better versions of themselves. So you guys, you got dudes coming and saying, man, you got it all figured out. Let me just do what you're doing. You have a group of people. You, you have know, to, you, you're the leader. Yeah. I, so there are all people like all kind of people out there that will tell you what to think and why to think it. I grew up in church. That's not what I'm about. I want to help people actually learn how to think, learn how to implement these principles so that, they actually can make the changes themselves so that they're not reliant on somebody continually doing that. And, and I'm not saying that people don't need leadership. They absolutely do. And it's super helpful to have a community of other men that are all headed on a similar mission. But I think the goal for me, at least is, is I'm an individualist. I think we need more empowered individuals, more empowered men. Did you vote for Biden? <laughs> Uh, man, I can't, I, I, I wouldn't be able to remember if I did <laughs> <laughs> smart answer. I asked these guys out here. I got a bunch of freaking Biden voters here working here. No way. Sure. I do. I'm a, I, I don't care. Like people are like, Brad, you, 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 you do that. Well, listen, I'm not, I'm open. I'm a, I'm an individualist. I think, look, if you want to be gay, be gay. You want to be trans, be trans. You want to vote Biden, vote Biden. As long as you're, you know, a good dude, I don't care. But yeah, so there, there's some here. I mess with them though. It's always fun to mess with people. Yeah. So I asked a people, you know, a few of them, you know, Hey, 
you happy about that? You, 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 you going to vote for him again? Thankfully, they all said no. And these guys were staunch Biden supporters. Not the ones that voted Biden because they didn't want to vote Trump. They actually liked him and, and believed in him. And now they're like, no. So I think hopefully people have learned their lesson with that nonsense. But anyway, I don't want to make it political. This will get suppressed. No one will, no one will hear it. <laughs> I was, I was going to say, I, I try to stay out of the politics. That's but smart. I should do the same. You know, at, at the same time. I don't care time. who wins. <laughs> Your bank account does. Well, again, I mean, like people always think I'm a, a massive Trump fan. I'm not a Trump fan per se. I'm a, I'm a business fan. The United States is a business, whether we like to know it or not. It's a business, and we need someone that understands business in there, not politicians. Politicians understand bullshit. They understand making deals on the side and, and, and making you believe that they're on your side. And in reality, they're, they're all being paid. And, and, and literally, their agenda is, is behind closed doors. It's not what they're saying. A business person, they're just trying to make the business work. Right. So I don't care who's in there. You know, I don't care who's in there. I, they just can't be politicians. I think the, poli the, the the era of politicians is what should end. It's not the Trump. It's not the anything. It's stop politicians, especially, you know, career politicians. But anyway, I don't want to make this political. I want to help dudes that are un that are stuck, get unstuck. I'm a dude that I would say is stuck in that regard. I'm not stuck in a lot of ways. And not only that, I know the information. I think I just have to go have a conversation with myself. You know, I, so this book is broken up into eight pillars and the first pillar is have heart. And I talk about it through the entire book. If you don't have leverage on yourself, like, it doesn't matter how much, you know, how much of the mindset stuff, how much of the bullshit you're not doing anything. Because the whole reason that we do anything is to change how we feel. Yeah. And if you're kind of like, eh, I just don't care. Well, of course you can get leverage on yourself. I, I mean, that would, that would be bit. a super easy thing. Go throw some money in escrow, hire somebody to, uh, you know, that you have to send a picture to every single day. <laughs> accountability. <laughs> and, yeah. Accountability. And then still, make it I painful still, enough that you'll do it. <laughs> yeah. It would have to be painful enough. Because if I put a little money in there and I just say, fuck the money. I have to go have a conversation with myself because at the end of the day, that's what, that's what earlier you were saying people have should start with, you know, I got to get there when it comes to fitness. Like I said, because again, to me, it's like, God damn it. What about you guys? No. Am I the only one? I mean, I, I, you know, when people, I hate working out, but I do it anyway. I know I want to figure out that because People I know that are shredded, they do it anyway. They're not everybody likes it, but they do it anyway. How do they get to the do it anyway mindset? Because I'm not a do it anyway. I'm a like, I want to, I should, I should all over myself as you, as you put it. But I mean, obviously I do work out, you know, I do go anyway. I just don't go to the extreme that I need to, to get where I just, if I could blink my eyes and freaking look shredded fuck yeah i'll take it do it right now dude this giorgio armani t-shirt you ever have the you ever buy one of these no dude i highly recommend every man in the world goes and gets <laughs> a giorgio armani t-shirt now they're not very cheap but man if i look like that dude this t-shirt would look a thousand times better <laughs> but that's what i'm thinking in my head is boom man if i was ripped i'd look a lot better but that doesn't translate to me beyond that so, you know, several of the things that you talked about, um, one is environmental design friction. So oftentimes you reduce the friction, you change the environment, you change the incentives, you change the rewards, you know, people, what gets, re uh, rewarded gets reinforced. Yeah. And so that's just a simple fundamental thing. If you got to drive to the gym, if it's an extra headache, if you have to put out your clothes, if you have to make these decisions, you know, those, those things are all impediments to making something as frictionless and easy as possible. Mm. But then I, I think we, I think, and I don't want to go into politics, but I think as a society, we've sort of become hypnotized by weakness masquerading as tolerance. And that's that you get what you tolerate. And Oh yeah. I forgot the bombs. There's a bomb. <laughs> that's, that's for sure. One you get what you tolerate. And if you continually tolerate something that you legitimately don't want, then 
it goes back to what I said earlier that you slowly erode your sense of self. You slowly erode your confidence and your being so that when you say you're going to do something, your unconscious is like, who are you kidding? You don't do what you say you're going to do. Yeah. And, and these are, I think if people truly understood the magnitude of importance of how important it is to keep your word to yourself, how important it is to keep your commitments and build that, like, I, I think they would, they would treat it far more seriously. And maybe they would set less serious commitments that are much more intentional. That's right. And that's what I talk about in my book that, I mean, all the top performing people in the world, if you look at them, it's not that they're making a ton of commitments. They're actually only making a few really high level commitments, but you have to ask yourself because there is a trade-off. If you do want to be that top performer, if you do want to be that person, then you do miss out on some other things. And so you just have to ask yourself, I mean, Michael Jordan's a great example. I mean, he just wanted to win no matter what. And that can work for you, but it can work against you. And so I, I really don't believe that every, we have this thing on social media. You've got all these guys out there that pretend like they are just on a hundred percent of the time, man, I never miss a workout. I never do this. I never, whatever. I talk about it in my book. It's like, dude, if you just, if you're operating at 40% and you go to 60 or 80%, 80% is a hundred percent improvement, right? I mean, you don't have to go to a hundred percent. You don't have to be operating at certain levels. And then I think, I think social media creates the illusion. It's, it's almost fictitious that it creates the illusion that people are operating this way. And sure, some people may be, but I don't think that's always the answer for every single person. The answer is to be comfortable with what it is that you care about and then double down on that. And then rather than letting your day be ruined by comparison, because you're comparing yourself to all these other people, just start comparing yourself to who you were yesterday. So I talk about five C's that like hold people back. Complacency, you just get complacent. Conformity, um, cowardice, comparison. And what's that, what's that last one? Uh, there's another one, but it's four C's now. So, and, and those hold people back. And, and rather, Cuckery. I'm sorry, <laughs> which one was it? Cuckery. Uh, yeah, that one. You know, so, so I think it's just like you have to decide and, and I do think we need more men that stand up and decide what is important to them. And that's that, what I'm talking about. See, I'm, I, I was just posing. I was acting <laughs> like I have this issue. I don't really have the issue. I solved it as of January 1. Oh. Yeah, you know, yeah. If I took this shit off, you'd see. I'm ripped. <laughs> no, I'm getting ripped, though. I've already made the decision. This, this, this year is my new... But that's what I was trying to get out so of you. So what's the deadline? Because that, that, that shit's the truth right there. What do you mean? Deadline for what? What's the deadline? I don't Post, have a deadline. Posting a shirtless picture on social media. Have no deadline. It's, it's a lifestyle. Okay. See, before that was my problem. I'm going to do this for 90 days. I'm going to do this. Uh, and then yep. I'd rationalize myself out of it. Now I'm like, look, I'm, I'm, I'm going to just do these things without fucking fail. Mm-hmm. I have a thing. ESD every single day, every single day, I'm going to do these things. And I've been doing them since the first. So what I was describing to you mm -hmm. was actually my prior self. Uh -huh. How did I fix it? You, you were just touching on it. You got a freaking, you got a, well, again, ultimately I had a conversation with myself. I did exactly what you were saying. I just d called it different things, but it's the same thing. And ultimately, man, you, you know, are you a pussy or not? Cause at the end of the day, that's what it boils down to. You know, you really want to work out? Yes, I do. But you can't bullshit. You can. You just don't. And the reason you don't is because it's uncomfortable. At the end of the day, man, that's what it is. You, you ever, I don't know about you, because if you're fit and you're, you you know, into fitness, you probably wouldn't, you know, understand. But for me, I think going to the gym is going to be hell. And then I get to the gym and it's not hell. In fact, it ain't even that big a deal. And when I'm done, it feels great. But for some reason, it just resets. Oh, God, I got to go to the gym. At what point, and it will, because, again, I've been doing it, seven, seven, what is it, 17th? I've been doing it. No, 18th. I've been doing it. 
18 days. So again, I'm down. I'm looking good. My, my clothes are getting a little looser. Give me, I, what, what do you think it would take? 90 days? Give me more, give me 90 more days, dude. I'll freaking do a shirtless pick. If you want me to set the deadline right now, bam, I do one now though. Cause I don't give a fuck, <laughs> but, but my point was I made a decision and that's what it boils down to. You got to make a decision and, and, you know, all that work that you're talking about, having a conversation, figuring out what you're, what you really want, you know, that happened prior to, and, and, and I never really did that. And that's why I'd always procrastinate because I didn't really make a decision. But once you make a decision and then you don't do it, that's more harmful than fricking you, you think, because that will tear away at your self-worth. And if your self-worth drops, so will your income, so will your relationships, so will everything. Believe it or not, you want to raise your net worth, raise your self-worth, make yourself feel better. How do you do that? Do what you say you're going to do. That's why, you know, I'll never cheat, never cheat in my relationship. Why? Well, because if, well, what if she does Dude, if she does, she loses. Why? Because you know how many, how few guys there are that won't. So like I walk around like freaking, you know, I'm some sort of unbelievable catch. Mentally, I, I, I do think I am. Not only, uh, you know, I won't cheat, but, you know, got dough. I'm, you know, I'm a pretty damn good catch. If I were a cheater, my mind would make me believe that, you know, she's the catch. And she is a catch, but that's, that's not my point. My point is, is I know that if I was cheating and being like everybody else, well, then I'm just like everybody else. How's that valuable? Everybody's that way. I want to be the opposite. So you can apply that with business. You can apply that with fitness. You can apply that with pretty much anything, but you have to freaking make a decision. That's what I've learned anyway. And that's exactly what you were just saying. I was playing like, like, like this morning I procrastinated. No, bro. Matter of fact, this morning I got after it. Leg day. Tomorrow I'll regret it. You ever you ever <laughs> regret leg day? Only my lower back sometimes. Yeah, I hate legs. They, I, it seems like they never. You know, you you do work you work out for a little while and you get sore for a little while and then pretty soon your soreness you know dwindles to where you're not that sore every time you work out and then pretty soon you know you're not really that sore at all. Someone said, "Well, you're not working out right." I work out by myself. I don't like spotters and all that shit. So at the end of the day, you know, you get to a point where you're conditioned and you don't get that sort. My legs never, every single time feels like the first time. Any tips for that? That's a new one for me. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, I mean, you know, getting sore every single time. It's it's not really a new one. I mean, you could try magnesium. You could try topical magnesium. That actually works for people who have trouble um, kind of getting it through their digestive system. So you can get a magnesium lotion. Um, that could help. But... Um, you know, I, I think that's one of those things that sometimes my legs will get sore over and over and over again. And they will. Then they stop. So, but I, I actually just moved up to uh, outside of Boise. So I'm actually about an hour from a gym. So I'm just totally garage workouts, resistance bands, just Rocky style <laughs> workouts, you know, so. You do it every day? Yeah. So where, where do people find Freedom 2.0 if they're like, man, I like this dude's approach? Yeah. So they can go to ck.coach, just the letter C K or Kalen compass.com. The, the spelling's a little long. So yeah. Spelling folks. C. let me do it right. C A E L I N K O M P A S S. Yep. So if you're lost, you need a compass. Yep. Exactly. You know what I'm saying, where are, where are you guys like from Boise or where are you from? How, who's your entourage? So that's one of my buddies uh, from Dallas. We actually danced together. And then hey, this is a childhood bunch of friend. Male strippers in here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, hey, well, I was talking about this the other day. Yeah, yeah. No, uh, I saw it. Yeah. yeah so, like, dude, because I, I was a roommate <laughs> once with a, with a male dancer. And I saw what would happen at those places. You wouldn't believe. And they were married. You wouldn't and believe. And it was like, dude, you were just doing this. And then, you see, we, we went to a place where... There was a male review where it was all chicks, obviously. And then there was these curtains. And at some point in time, the curtains would open up and then it's a nightclub and the dudes were over there. Now, if you're smart and you were a single dude, you'd be there. Why? Because, man, I'll tell you what, they're ready to go for some reason. Yep. But what, what the men didn't see and the boyfriends and the husbands that were on the other side of that curtain didn't see is what would happen between the end of the show and the curtains opening. And it wasn't that long. Shit. 
I'm telling you right now, that's why I made that video. People were like, oh, that's not true. I'm like, dude, trust me. My chick ain't going anywhere near strip. Well, you should trust her. Fuck Definitely you, dude. It not. ain't nothing about trust, nothing. Nope. Okay, I ain't trusting shit. And, and, and let me tell you something. If you don't want a haircut, stay out to barbershop. Yep. But I do trust my girl. But it, I, I've been around those shows. Did you guys experience the same shit? I mean, just, you know. It's unfair, isn't it? And what, what causes that? Uh, what do you mean? What causes girls to act that way? Just to go straight up. Oh, it's, I don't want to say slutty. Let's say uninhibited, it's, uninhibited. Like in other <laughs> words, they were like, they were, they were, I'm sure they yeah. were like normal women, you know, uh, married, most of them you know, whatever boyfriends happily. But for some reason, when you get a bunch of dudes running around in freaking outfits and dancing, they, they, they lose it. I don't understand. What, why? I go to a titty bar. I don't do that. I don't <laughs> sit there and frankly, no, oh my God. It's almost like they go nuts. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I think it's almost a safe space in if a you, weird way. Are you like married? In a weird way. I'm not. If you were married, would you let your girl go to a strip show? I've worked there for six years. Absolutely not. Like I've seen things you would not believe. See? vindication like, <laughs> people now go back you on would have that no post idea and quit talking shit yeah i'm telling I mean, you i could tell some stories that could be a podcast in and of itself that's well it's, we should have went we well, should have went there too <laughs> no nah, i mean you know i'm i have a different mission in the world at this point and that's you know really helping men out of that confusion into clarity and that's that's well, that's really awesome about, so i'm glad you came out with your book i i, I talked to you before you had a book you did. And I said, you know, yeah, I'll put you on the podcast, but why don't you write a book or something first? Yeah. So there's something to talk about. You did it, dude. Well, you know, Coach Burt, one of our mutual friend, Coach Burt, you know, he's, what is he on? 18, 19, 20 books at this point. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I couldn't, I, I, I can't put out that many, but I decided to do something. Um, he talks about doing something remarkably bold. And so I wanted to put something out that was actually not like every other book that was bold. That was something that I feel like, because I, I have read enough at 35, um, you know, however many books I've read, I, I don't know, well over 500 to know when books have certain themes. And I also know what holds people back when it comes to books. And so I was talking with my buddy Shelby here just before, and he was like, dude, I've probably picked up 50 self-improvement books and you make it halfway a quarter, three quarters of the way through and you put it down because it doesn't grip you. It doesn't hold your attention. And so I think there's that a lot of books were written almost in an old school style to just drive price, to just drive those things as compared to really taking the reader into account. And since this book is written specifically for men, you know, as I was telling you, it's got this crazy text. If you can see it in the, in the video there, if you're watching, I spaced it to where it has a cadence and it's actually designed to be listened to more than read. And so I wrote it with that in mind because I also wanted people to be able to listen to a chapter before they go to the gym, like you're talking about, and be pumped up. And so you'll listen to a chapter, it's 20 minutes, something like that. And you're like, damn, I just got really valuable fundamental information for my life, but I'm also motivated. So it's like a mix between motivation, but also really all the best pieces of personal development, self-improvement that I personally went through and then also helped other people with and just put it into one volume because, and everybody told me not to write it like this. Everybody said, write a book on a single subject, you know, atomic habits, discipline equals freedom, uh, book on goals, whatever it may be. Don't write something that's so broad, but, I don't think I could have sat with myself because I wanted to be able to hand somebody a book and be like, dude, this is a book I needed five years ago. Yeah. I didn't need to have to go sort through hundreds of books and piece all these things together. I needed a book that was more like a battle guide to be like, bro, you are stuck. Here are the steps to get out of that spot. Here are the steps to build self-worth. Here are the steps to have self-respect to gain personal integrity, to learn to keep your commitments, to actually implement standards and not just standards because everybody's like, oh, just raise your standards. Like actually here are the standards that will help you take responsibility. Where do they find the book? It's on Amazon. Amazon folks. And by the way, uh, this sounds like 
you know, instead of reading 150, just read this one first. And you might, might have all the rest, all the value from all the rest in, in here. Do you have it in audio though? I have it in audio. I'm a big fan of the business model of taking things that work really well and doing them in just half the time. So that's what I tried to do. But with it, the book. Does, it is an audio. It is an audio. I was going to say because yep. it's meant to be listened to, and you yep. didn't do it in audio. Like, oh no, my I did it in audio. Not in audio. Yeah. Oh Everyone no, it's it keeps audio. going. Do you got it in audio? Do you got? No, I haven't done it yet. Yeah. Did it's it's a, a fun process. Did you go to a studio to do it? I actually recorded it myself. Wasn't that difficult? Well, because of the history uh, of dancing, I learned how to edit uh, audio and all of that stuff. So I already had microphone, etc. So I took about six hours and I built a studio inside of my place. Um, so I just built that out and started recording. What could I do my audio book right here? What do I do? Just get the pages and read it? Well, you would in here just listening to it. You'd need to turn off your AC probably. Any any sort of sound is just picked up in the background, especially with these are the what SM7B microphones. I don't, so they're gonna, I don't know. They, they are. I can tell you. They're, they're going to pick that audio up. And so you're going to hear any little background noise. So you really, you're going to have to turn those things off. I recorded mine in the middle of summer in Dallas. So Could you hear the sun? <laughs> you literally could. I, I'm, I'm almost surprised you don't hear sweat dripping off of me. Because I would, I would go into my studio and close it off. And after 45 minutes of reading, I'm just dripping sweat, <laughs> you know, and then I go take a break and keep going. So well, I'll go download the audio. Uh, uh, Alex Hermosi says, get the audio and the book because you'll learn better yeah. that way while you're listening and reading. But I, I go to the gym. I like to listen to audio. I'm going to go listen to this. You guys should too. Appreciate you coming in, dude. Thanks for C having me. Congrats on this. Thank you. And, uh, you know, Maybe we'll have you back down the road after freedom's been around. Freedom's been around a while. How long's it been? Uh, a few years. Yeah. Like maybe have you back and get some, some stories and talk about the epic adventures of male dancing. <laughs> Appreciate you coming in till next time. Keep it real. Right. So when you want to build a system for yourself, you'll be successful if you have the good content. If you don't know what you're doing, well, then light is not going to help you. So, so I know, but, but just hear me out. Yeah. So what we do is look for the people with good content. Why? Because if you have good content, 